Without further ado, here is an extended trailer for you guys. What exactly is the Schofield Reference Bible? Let us look critically at just one page of the book that has become the guide for secularist Jews in Israel and evangelical Christians in America to explain why they think present-day Israel has the right to all of the land in the Middle East beginning with Palestine. Genesis 12.3 is part of the Torah and is quoted in the Koran. These three verses are standard in the King James translation and very similar in other Bibles. Let me paraphrase it as you read the Old English. The Lord told Abram to leave his home and family and go into a land that God would show him. God promised to then make of Abram a great nation, bless him, and make his name great, protect him by blessing his friends and cursing his enemies, and from Abram's seed all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Now for the part that is important to traditional Christians. I quote, In these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Christianity has for 2,000 years taken this to be the first notice from God of the coming Savior of mankind. Genesis 12.3 is the earliest covenant that God made to Abram, and it is the one used by Israelis and Christian Zionists to justify the idea that the entire Middle East should be Israeli property. I quote, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. Zionists of all races interpret the phrase, into a land that I will show thee, as a perpetual land grant to present-day Israel. Now we will examine the most effective corrupter of scripture in history, one Cyrus I. Schofield, a 19th century American. Note on page 19 that the footnotes dwarf the text. Note also that the italicized insertions in between the verses that are not part of the Bible. In the 1967 version of the Schofield Reference Bible, there are more footnotes than in the original 1909 version. And since the death of Schofield in 1921, the footnotes have grown to dwarf the text in these very important pages. Let's look again at the vital footnote 2 found in the Schofield Reference Bible in 1967 on page 19. The footnote reads, God made an unconditional promise of blessing through Abram's seed to the nation of Israel to inherit a specific territory forever. But the passage doesn't say anything like this. God orders Abram to go to a land that God will show him, using the first person familiar, thee, meaning Abram and no one but Abram. The passage does not say that God is giving any piece of land to anybody forever. It doesn't say anything about Israel. Now, how complicated is, is it? Leave, leave your land, go where I tell you to go, and I will protect you. How complicated is that? How many footnotes does it take to understand what God was saying to Abraham? I mean, anybody who reads that should be able to figure that out, that that's what the message is. But Mr. Schofield wrote all of this to explain it. In fact, if we accept biblical history, we know that Abram had no children when this happened, and not for quite a while. So there was no person or nation named Israel when this promise was made. There was no state or nation named Israel. The man Israel did not even exist in Abram's imagination when God spoke to him. How then could Schofield or the Oxford University Press say that God was promising the land to the present-day state of Israel forever? Where did the state of Israel get in this? When Abraham was spoken to by God, Israel, the man known as Israel, hadn't been born yet. He was two generations in the future, and he was not a state. He was a person that eventually had a tribe. And then after him, 3,000 years later, along comes a bunch of Europeans who name their state after him. But this says that God gave that land to the nation of Israel forever. Imagine 70 million people who are taught this every day. The Oxford University Press did not stop there. No. 3 on page 19 reads, there is a promise of blessing upon the individuals and nations who bless Abram's descendants, and a curse lay upon those who persecute the Jew. The word Jew is used in the footnotes in describing an occurrence two to three thousand years before the word Jew existed. In fact, Jew is taken from the name Judah, who was, it is told, one of the twelve grandsons of Abraham, Abram of Genesis 12. Neither Judah nor Jew existed, and this footnote is a false concoction. Note 3 continues, God's promised Abram and his seed certainly did not terminate at Sinai with the giving of the law. 
The New Testament and Old Testament are full of post-Sinai promises concerning Israel and the land which is to be Israel's everlasting possession. Listeners should be asking, why is Oxford University Press putting words in the mouths of the readers of this Bible? To make them think their God promises blessings and curses on people today based on how they think about or act toward present-day Jews and present-day Israel. What about all the other people in the world? Let's read further in the footnotes to Genesis 12.3. Promise to the Gentiles. I will bless them that bless thee. Those who honor Abram will be blessed, and curse them that curse thee. This was a warning literally fulfilled in the history of Israel's persecution. It has invariably fared ill with the people who have persecuted the Jew, and well with those who have protected him. And here is the punchline. For a nation to commit the sin of anti-Semitism brings inevitable judgment. The future will still more remarkably prove this principle. Isn't that convenient? So, so now you have anti-Semitism is created in Abraham's time. Uh, the, the footnote to Abraham's words create and the word anti-Semitism. Christian Zionism believes that our nation will be judged if we are not sufficiently kind as a nation to the state of Israel. They have made sin a sort of a national corporate event rather than an individual thing. Of course, there is no such thing as national sin. Nations don't sin, we do. Individuals do, men do. But this has created a national sin so that Christian Zionists like John Hagee believe that God will rain fire down on our country, will somehow punish our entire nation for being insufficiently kind to the state of Israel. Zionist-friendly Oxford University Press says in our Bible that the whole country will be considered in sin, and we will be in line for judgment from God if we are not properly friendly to the nation of Israel. And remember, there was no Jew in the time of Abram. There was no Israel at the time that Schofield penned the original notes, and it is doubtful that Cyrus Schofield would have even understood the enormity of the evil purpose for which his book was written. It was to have the most prominent Zionist publisher in the world, and it would deify a country that did not exist, and would be born of force 40 years after his death.